of the Homeworkies podcast. We are very excited today to be here to talk with uh, an actor today who's going to be on the new movie on the Up Channel, The Christmas Christmas in Paris. And we have a true Frenchman here. <laughs> we have true. Mr. Carl E. Landler is here. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner. And Lisa is here. Hi, guys. Yes. And Carl. Hi, uh, <laughs> hi Rachel. <laughs> yes. Carl, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And uh, what we like to do with our guests is like to give them a chance to introduce yourself and tell us what inspired you to become an actor. All right. So thank you so much for having me on the podcast. First of all, that's great. I'm very excited about um, being able to talk about the movie with you. So I'm Carl Elander, as you said. You said it perfectly well. That's amazing. Your accent is amazing. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I am a French actor, and I've been extremely lucky that uh, that act acting was actually my main job for all the last years. And I, I actually become an actor uh, thanks to a TV show, an American TV show you probably know. It's Friends. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Really? Yes. Nice. So when the, when the TV show was airing in France for the first time, I think that was mid-90s or something like that, um, I already, originally bought it to learn English. I said, okay, I have to learn English. It's something <laughs> in my life, in my head. <laughs> so, and I was watching those actors having so much fun, you know, like that was a comedy thing. And so they were just laughing all the time. And they were doing this like amazing, like uh, acting together. And I was like, it might be extremely fun being an actor. I want to laugh, like as much as they laugh. <laughs> and I was even more interested in the, you know, the behind the scene where they were like, you know, uh, forgetting their lines and they were like, you know, stumbling in what they have to say. And they were like, like laughing, they couldn't stop and they couldn't say their lines. And I, like, I want to laugh, like they laugh and I want to make money. <laughs> it's perfect yeah so the, the the money side i realized that was a harder <laughs> but more complicated but i had good laugh on the way and i still have good laugh and i had good laugh on this movie christmas in yeah. paris though so so far i'm laughing not all the way to the bank or the time but i'm laughing <laughs> <laughs> so it was as fun as you hoped it would be yes you know friends think, yes um I had, had the pleasure to be on a very, uh, quite few famous French TV show. Mm -hmm. But the last one I was on, I was a regular on uh, a TV show named A Wonderful Family. It's a comedy TV show. So, yeah, I got, I got, I got lucky to be able to do uh, some comedy and uh, crack jokes with an amazing cast. There. We were like, we we're playing a family. So we were probably like, uh, sister, brothers, and fathers, and mothers, plus cousins. So they, we were a lot of actors on that show. So uh, very, we were bonding a lot, and uh, so we got we got the chance for when we are filming seasons to spend a lot of time in the hotels in Portugal, uh, sometimes in in the island, French island like La Réunion, Guadeloupe. Mm -hmm. So we got to travel and we got to to laugh a lot. And you know, of course, on the way you have also more complicated situation. You know, it's not all. Uh, easy to be an actor but the good experience the good jobs and gigs and the, the good friends around make it like a, a, a perfect ride mm, that's awesome i saw in your past um that you were also a stuntman is that true it, it is true and that's exciting amazing bravo <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting how was that how did you get into that so I, I, I was a professional gymnast when I was young. Ooh, hmm. So, you know, pommel horse, floor, horizontal bar, you know, the Olympic kind of thing. And I was pretty good. I was on the, on the French team uh, when I was a kid. And so the door was like pretty easy to open because I came back with a very high technical background. And I contacted Luc Besson. I don't know if you know Luc Besson. is the one that's directing a lot of action films like uh, The Fifth Element. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And many others. And he's a big French producer. So anyway, uh, I went to contact him and I said, you're the only one doing big action film in France and, and I have all those skills. Um, maybe we can work together. And 
from that, he introduced me to the stunt coordinator, the, the, one of the main guys he was working with at the time. And then, you know, I did some kind of audition, stunt audition, and I showed what I can do. And because of my background and I was so technical, I, you know, I jumped in the team right away. And from there, uh, I did amazing things in, uh, in stunt. And that uh, also allowed me to travel so much, probably even more than the acting, because mm -hmm. I've been to, to I've been doing stunts in so many big films like Bollywood with the biggest star, uh, Russia, Morocco, I mean, many, many mm -hmm. countries. That was amazing because you get to do stuff that you don't do as a citizen or as a normal person. Mm -hmm. uh, get to run on cars, to jump through windows, to get <laughs> by cars, <laughs> to be in a helicopter, to, to do so many things that you don't do in the real life. And you see explosions all around you. You run through fire. So, I mean, your kid side of yourself is really, really pleased for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And you get paid for that, which is even better. Was and there no any... one... Tell me. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, was there anything that scared you? That you're like, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the that time, would be me. Like, yeah, twice, four, five times. You're like, oh. I'm doing this, it's gonna, oh, la, la, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> no choice, you have to go for it, right? They're all waiting for you, the camera is set up, or the team is waiting, and they have to move on on the day. And they're like, action! Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I have to jump, I have to fall, I have to get through that thing. <laughs> oh, wow. So do you yeah. still do any of that now, or is it not really so much anymore? No, the beauty of it is like, because this is my personal skill in, in some mm -hmm. way, I've been doing a lot of action things um, mm -hmm. as an actor, as the lead in my country, and even on a sci-fi TV show here in the US. And, and I'm doing all the fight, and I love that. And I can yeah. you know, have real good fight because I can handle this kind of thing. And so I can run and jump and slide. So but this time, uh, instead of being just a stunt guy that you don't really see, or just a dude in the background falling, or just being a stunt double, I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to do my own stunt as me, my own car, my own character. So, <laughs> so that's, that's even more fun. <laughs> that's awesome. Do you, do you, does it terrify your family and friends or are they just, do they love that you're uh, doing all these stunts? <laughs> but they don't really know all the story. <laughs> <laughs> I keep stuff for me. <laughs> because sometimes, you know, when you have to... <laughs> fall from a rooftop, and bounce <laughs> here and there, and then land on the ground. So they don't really want to know that, right? <laughs> right. Yes, so, I get that. I was going to say, did you have any stunts in Christmas in Paris? <laughs> uh, let's say, let's see. Yeah. Um, that was walking on the snow with a um, uh, city shoe, you know, the shoe you have when, you're, uh, when, you, when you have a suit. Oh, right. Uh, so I did a little slide, but actually that was a... Um, a fake one. Uh, I wanted to scare the crew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to go to point A, from point A to point B, uh, to meet my lovely partner, co-star, uh, mm -hmm. Rebecca who played Robin. And as I'm walking, I say, oh, I'm going to do something. And I pretend to slide and almost fall. And, and when they say cut, uh, they were like all uh, white, you know, like they faded the face. They were scared. They were like, oh my God, we thought you were like broken your knee or something. <laughs> because they didn't want the shooting to stop, right? <laughs> so, and so they keep it. I did normal ones, but I, they keep one of them where I pretend to fall and because they probably laughed at the edit. So that was yeah. cool. That's, oh, that's really I like it. I have to keep my eye out for that part yeah. of the movie. Yeah, and, it's a small and... one. I did a big, big one, but they, that, they said that one is too big. <laughs> you can't put it in. You're gonna, you're gonna use it. Use it. You're gonna use the smaller one. But you're gotcha. seeing me while I'm sliding. This is me carrying the crew. <laughs> and that's funny. So, what part of France are you from originally? Originally, I grew up uh, around Paris. In Paris. Okay. I moved around that when I was uh, young, and I moved over to the south of France. Uh, a little bit later. And this mm -hmm. is where I actually grew up in, uh, as a teenager. So this is really where I was more independent and I was going out and I was uh, meeting new friends and doing all the things the teenager is doing. The good stuff, <laughs> the bad stuff. 
Um, we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. They are the good folks over at Care Of. And right now you can get 50% off your first order of Care Of at takecareof.com. Enter code Hallmarkies50, which is different than our previous code, Hallmarkies50, and you can get your discount. So what they do at Care Of is they they provide vitamins that you can get you can get them that they come on a regular basis on a subscription basis or you can get a one-time order and they start you out with an online quiz five minutes and they try to figure out kind of what your uh, best vitamin routine will be through these questions and i think it's really helpful and uh, it's easy convenient they come in little packets the vitamins so you can just take them you can have them in your purse you can take them uh, easily and it's also just, it's just great attention to detail with uh, everything everything has your name on it everything is really tried to be prepared for you and we're going to be going into the times of res new year's resolutions and, and trying to be more healthy so i think this is a great thing it would make a great gift for people in your life who are trying to get healthy uh so lisa you had a chance to try care of what do you think I have. And I did, I, I will say that, um, I, you know, I've never been a vitamin person per se, mainly because I don't like all the sorting and all the getting stuff together and which one should I take? And ugh, it, it honestly, it was mm -hmm. too much, but with care of you take the quiz and you find out what your goals are, whether it's, you know, wellness or sleep or energy or even fitness. And it basically gives it, you know, a, an actual like customized pack and they come pre-packaged already so you just pull one out of the slot it says your name on it and it has a little quote of the day and i love it because i just grab it out in the morning put it in my bag and when i get to work and i sit down i open it up and i take them at my desk and it's awesome mm -hmm. make sure you check out uh, your first order you can get 50 percent off go to takecareof.com enter hallmarkies 50 at checkout to america before or was this project your first time coming out here no i started to travel actually uh, earlier on because you were talking about having a stunt in the movie christmas in paris but you yeah, had another stunt that was the language right i have to be very careful on the english to make sure i was understandable and i was not missing uh, some little words in the middle right? grammar kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, so i had to travel not because i knew i was shooting christmas in paris but i knew and my thought process was Okay, now you have been watching Friends, the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> you know some lines, but you know only the punchline <laughs> of the jokes. So let's see if you are capable of having a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I started there. I started a week, two weeks, and I had this idea as well that maybe you can work in the U.S. and work in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So I had to start my travels back and forth. This is I started like a few years ago, and I really it really helped me with the with the language. I, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It helps to be in the environment where you don't have a choice but to try and figure it out. Um, the few yeah. times I've left the United States and I've tried to go to different countries, I've tried to speak the language because I think that's only appropriate. And, you know, it takes a few days, but then you're like, oh, I rec yes, that make okay, I got it. And so, yeah, I think that's really amazing that you did that. So yeah, that's but very I'm cool. Doing it as well. I think it's important. Each time I'm traveling in a country, I try to, to say, to, to be able to say uh, hello, thank you, you're welcome, right. mm -hmm. and a few more funny things. Mm -hmm. Right. So how did you end up getting this role in Christmas in Paris? They just had auditions in France or how did you so it's happen? A, it's a mix of two things. Uh, first, I got the audition. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in LA at the time. And okay. so it came from LA, from Los Angeles, because I have mm -hmm. a representation here in LA. So it came in LA. They, oh, they, they are looking for a French dude. Oh, okay. I didn't really know. I knew there was a, a movie, a Christmas film. I didn't know that it was the lead actually i thought that was a part in the film so mm -hmm. i i sent it and he went extremely fast i mean let's say on monday i got the audition i tape i sent it for tuesday right they got the tape i do the scenes they sent me the productions came back on wednesday to my management here in la and they said oh we are interested with this dude can we can you put it on hold tomorrow we come back to you please because i probably wasn't the one on the final list and Thursday, they came back to me and they said, okay, bingo, you have it. And <laughs> yeah, it went so fast. And then wow. 
on the Tuesday I was on the plane. Amazing. Wow. So fast. That's, that's mm-hmm. amazing. What was the shooting schedule? Was it a very short shooting schedule? I know some of these can be done very, very quickly. Yeah, it, so how, yeah. TV usually, yeah, super fast. You go six, nine page, uh, pages a day. So like mm-hmm. uh, 90 minutes is probably three weeks. Right. Uh, this one, because we had to travel in France and Paris, um, it took more than four weeks uh, because we have the travel days and we have some uh, shorter days in France and, and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is where in France, when I, I met the network, I learned as well that the French network actually gave my name to the production that contacted the management. Uh, oh. So that was another side of, uh, of the story, which like, I never worked with that French network. I used to work with the main network in France and mm-hmm. then worked with the, the other ones. And they, I was very thrilled that they actually knew me and they gave my name as an option in production. Nice. That was nice, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Awesome. Um, what parts of, I mean, so yeah, I know the story goes to Montana, but it wasn't in Montana that you guys filmed, right? It was probably Canada area? Exactly. Can- okay. <laughs> the, Can- the Canadian Mon- uh, Montana, we gotcha. Canadian <laughs> Montana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very um, home of Americans. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, so you filmed in um, Canada, but then you guys actually went to Paris. Yes, for the is that what you said? You you went to Paris to shoot there for part of the movie. Exactly. Um, was that nice to be back? Well, I mean, that was great. I was I was so thrilled because I'm Parisian. I'm Parisian. I'm living in Paris. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm here in LA. I get cast. I shoot in Canada, and then they fly me uh, in Paris. I was like, oh, it's perfect. <laughs> they bring yeah. me to my country. <laughs> right. <laughs> And so I get to shoot that movie, this American film, in Paris. And after, we had to go back to Canada to keep going, right? And that was very cool. And that was even more cool that I can show some things to, to the Canadian crew and the, the actors. And uh, we get to eat some very good food and drink some really good wine. And so they were extremely pleased to be in France. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, going to France with a French person is probably different than me and my sister going and just dropping down and <laughs> trying yeah. to figure our way around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even if Paris is not that big, you still really don't know where you go, what you do, and you don't have someone to give you the addresses, for sure. Right, right. Trying to figure out even just the arrondissements, like just trying to figure out how to navigate from one to the other. We, I told her that we needed two weeks, one week to get used to it, and then another week to actually go out and do stuff. <laughs> Try True. and figure our way out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Figure our way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's easy to, specifically if you don't walk too much in the city, which the weather was great. I mean, I hope you walked as much as possible because it's so beautiful. But when right. you go to the subway or uh, the metro station, you know, and you get out somewhere else, you don't really know where you where you go, you know. So and, and you miss the entire city. So this is true. Plus, I didn't realize on the uh, metro that when you go to your stop, the doors don't always automatically open. There's a little latch. Yeah. And I didn't know, and I was stood there, and I missed like three stops until somebody very <laughs> graciously came over and showed me, and I was like, "Oh, thanks," because you know, in New York, and the subway just opens, and I just, I just kept missing stops, and finally, somebody was very nice and showed me how to open the door and let me out. I was like, "Oh, thank you." So now I know. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, he was looking at you all the way. Like, oh, she tried to get. Out. And she's bumping into the door. She's bumping into the door. <laughs> yeah. what, what would you say is the biggest mi- misconception Americans have about France and French, French life? Uh, let's say, uh, so the, the, we're actually nice people. <laughs> <laughs> we're not all rude in all bad. Maybe Parisians a little bit, a little bit, you know, because everything is fast and things have to go fast and they have no, no kind of patience. But we're nice and we love, we love to communicate with people. And specifically, as you said, um, when you try to speak the language, they really appreciate that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I found. As long as I walked in and, and said, you know, bonjour, and uh, I just let everybody know right away, like, uh, je parle français, like, un petit peu, please be nice to me. And then everybody was actually very nice. I didn't have anybody be mean to me at all. Yeah. Nope, so. You you get some because you know you have some for sure like everywhere but uh, you have some rude radar some you know 
stop looking yeah. at you. They make it like a per, they make it a, a thing. There's some bars in France that it's known and famous uh, for <laughs> having the waiter to be rude at you, right? So that's their thing. So I don't know why people go there. That's so unbearable. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the thing. The server is, doesn't say hello. Doesn't bring the bread. You say wait for the water. He's just like he just he just doesn't even pay attention to you. And you, you keep begging for him to to feed you. <laughs> I guess everybody has their uh, their claim to fame. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Come here, and everybody will be really rude. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so, when did you guys film this? We did the movie, I think, between uh, April, uh, May, April, and May. Yeah. So, so you didn't have to do it when it was like super hot, do a Christmas movie. No, we yeah, no, no, we were lucky because thank God it wasn't like summer, and we actually got also a lot of snow, uh, and they were like surprised that we got that much snow. I mean, some morning we got the blizzard. It was. I don't know in um, you're in a Fahrenheit, but that was minus eleven, which is below freezing temperature. Yeah, wow. yeah. yeah, that was cold. And you know, you got those scenes, you're all proper, you have your tie, your shirt, and stuff like that, and that's it, <laughs> right? And you right. got everything out of the limousine, and everything is fine. No, everything is cold. <laughs> so right. <everything> very, <laughs> you very to, cold. <laughs> you have to walk and look normal. Like, no, it's not freezing out here i'm just in a suit no jacket but yeah it's fine yeah. oh my gosh i can't even imagine <laughs> oh, no. that was like you know all the i know you call that the warm little thing you put on on, on your shoes and on mm -hmm. your clothes. I, have, I, was, I, I was having all of them everywhere and, oh my uh, gosh and i was still yeah and i was still trying to uh not you know clench my teeth like you know <laughs> to articulate <laughs> between my lines so when there was action i was like very relaxed and when they were seeing cut i was like <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh gosh yeah. that's funny uh, so when you found out that you got the role did you just freak out were you so excited the two <laughs> <laughs> i was, I was uh, freaking out out of excitement right yeah 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 um, i was like oh my god i had 90 90 pages to learn <laughs> yeah now for i'm shooting in a week and it's all in English. And you know, this kind of film, you talk a lot. <laughs> so yeah. mm -hmm. It's very, a lot of scene, a lot of dialogues. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, I say, okay, 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 car. So just like, so try to get the schedules as much as possible ahead of time. Try to see which days and which scenes are we shooting first. And like this, you can prioritize, right? That's the thing you have to do. And right. so I start to learn the first few days. I was off book of page and then i knew enough for the next few of the 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 five six and seven days right the days after and then each time i was like kind of checking the day done i was moving forward uh, my uh, learning process i was learning the next day uh, the next three days and i was uh, making sure i was almost half book with the, the day number five six six seven each time i was finishing the day i was always making sure that i knew my week ahead mm -hmm. Instead of trying to learn the whole script in, in one go, because yeah. it's, too, it's impossible, it's too much lines, and, uh, and it's not theater. It's not like doing this over and over every day, right? Um, so, yeah, that was the main thing for me. That was, how can I prioritize and work smart? Uh, work on the English as well. Some, you know, stressing the right words, um, making the right liaisons, and all, all of that. You know, to, to be as much as possible, you know, uh, uh, free and, and stuff for the audience to be able to catch the, the, the language. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, that's I mean, because you wanted to, you don't want. I think if I was memorizing it all, I I think it might sound kind of uh, kind of robotic, you know, like I'm just. Like, you wanted to sound natural. As much as possible, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think people are going to enjoy it. I've watched, I've seen two trailers. I found two different ones and I've, I've watched them and I think people are going to really dig it. I mean, of course, the scenery is gorgeous. That's like a character unto itself, but I think the story itself is pretty cute. So I'm excited. I'm excited for this weekend. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a cute story, you know? And yeah. The, and it, so you can see uh, even on the, well, you have uh, trailers on, uh, on YouTube, you can 
and you right. have up TV, Facebook, you have like, they put some on their own page of the network. They put some little scenes. Uh -huh. That's perfect to get you uh, to the mood here uh, and to understand uh, the kind of the dynamic of the two characters, uh, Robin and Luca, my, my character and Robin, my love interest. Uh -huh. uh, but it's fun because there's kind of two storylines. There's the storyline, probably the storyline A, which is the principle with the, uh, the Lucas meets Robin, Robin meets Lucas, and then, you know, they, they challenge themselves and uh, they're agreeing, disagree, they, you know, they have to make it work. And then you have the B storyline, which is um, uh, Robin has an or as a her storyline and Lucas has his one, his own, which is he has a secret. Right. And as he's moving forward in the story, uh, Robin starts to understand that something is going on and discover the secret. And that might bring some trouble in the Christmas time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's interesting because when I did Lucas, I tried to have kind of a, uh, to play out the storyline with his secrets, that is something heavy that he has to face in some point. And, uh, is challenging himself uh, by doing this business deal because he know that's bringing him closer to what he's afraid of. Uh -huh. And at the same time, I wanted to play Lucas that just see for the first time Robin and he's kind of, wow, having a major crush <laughs> on the girl. And like, okay, I like that one. How can I, can I, get, can I can't get the girl, right? And then he's right. like, Robin is challenging. She's like, not easy to catch. And so he has to adjust his game, maybe being less, um, uh, less just the one that want to hit on her, but more, okay, maybe you have to be the real me. And how can I show her that I really like her? So that's this kind of two things. Yeah. And time. That was fun. Yeah, that yeah. sounds fun. So you got to work with Rebecca Dalton as yeah. your lead. Yeah. That, that must have been fun. Yeah, she's fun. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time. So you guys had pretty good chemistry together. Yeah, that, that works well. And mm -hmm. plus the few days, the first few days of shooting that it was in France. So mm -hmm. that was perfect because everyone was in, on location. Everyone was happy to not be shooting in Canada as they probably could. <laughs> so right. yeah, the mood was, we're so, well, we're all happy. <laughs> so <laughs> Mia was happy to be back home, speak my language and, and show them some stuff. Mm -hmm. Then they were happy to be here and uh, with Rebecca. So we were completely jet lagged because we shot right away, we landed. <gasps> At like night, morning, wake up, shoot. <laughs> so mm, like, yeah. At, yeah. At that's one, tough. That's tough. And then at 1 p.m. Uh, in France, you're kind of done. You're like falling asleep, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, that helps us to bounce. That helps us to get together closer and to laugh at it uh -huh. and, and do a lot of improv because you, all the scenes when you walk along, you visit the city and it's a lot of improv. You know, the camera is filming you, they want chemistry. So that's the first day we never almost never met before <clears throat> so but that was it was so easy because i think we were so tired <laughs> so, so all the social kind of barriers and things like that they were like no nope, not anymore <laughs> just, yeah everybody was too tired <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. funny it's good strategy on their part i guess yeah, they made it worse. So let's let's exhaust them on the plane in jet lag. They <laughs> don't need to think. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So you did the first part of the movie then in uh, the first part of the shoot in Canada then, and then went over to, to France? Yes, we did actually the opposite. We started in France, <clears throat> and then I was in Canada. We did all the meetings, the fittings, uh, the production meetings and everything. And then we, a few days after, we jump on a plane <clears throat> and we all meet in, a, we all met in, a, in France, uh, Paris. And then we flew back right away to Canada and to keep going the entire rest of the field. Okay. So, yeah. I'd like to thank our second sponsor for this episode of the podcast. They are our friends over at HelloFresh. And right now you can get nine free meals with HelloFresh by going to hellofresh.com slash hallmarkies9. That's uh, Hallmarkies 9. So Fresh is America's number one meal kit. We've seen these all around. These meal kits are getting very popular. But what they do really, what they focus on at HelloFresh is they make the products, make the meals simple, delicious, and flexible. And so you have this recipe card that helps you to see all along the way so you know 
that you're making it right at all the different phases, which I think really helps to be like, okay, that's how the chicken's supposed to look here. <laughs> and, all this stuff. and I tried it recently with three meals and I thought everything was really yummy. It was different than what I would make just by myself. And it's just nice as a single person because, you know, a lot of times I'm not going to use a whole big thing of spices or a whole big thing of sauces. And I'll just have something in my fridge forever because of one meal. Whereas with HelloFresh, you just get the amount that you need for that recipe. So I thought that was real nice. Uh, and Lisa, you had a chance to try HelloFresh. What do you think? I did. And I got the, uh, for the family size. So mm. um, what I loved about it is my kids are old enough now to help out. And so I hand them the card and I said, come on, help me. And they absolutely love it. They love unpacking the bag. They love getting everything sorted. They love chopping stuff. They, they really do love helping out. So I do like that part of it. And it kind of gets them on board with just kind of meal prepping and knowing what goes into it. So yeah, we've enjoyed it so far. Everything's been super tasty. So yeah. Great. Yeah. So to get nine free meals, go to lowfresh.com slash Hallmarkies9 and then use code Hallmarkies9 at checkout. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. And so was it fun working with Daphne Zuniga? Oh. She's a legend. So she's yes. Uh huh. That's amazing. Um, even imagine for me. Uh, <laughs> I was a teenager years ago. And I was watching Mero's place on TV. <laughs> right? Yep. So every time after school, that was, that was airing like around 5 p.m. in France. Every time after school, I was running home, not doing my homework, watching Mero. <laughs> and I was watching the guys and Daphne Zuninga. As yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, years later, uh, when they told me, oh, you know who's going to be in the movie with you? And they showed me a picture. I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> I'm like, from the south of France, being a teenager, um, let's say being honest, having a crush on her, right? Uh, yeah. Over 10 years later, I'm in, a, I'm in filming an American film as the lead, and I have Daphne Zuniga in the movie with me. It's like, wow. It's like, <laughs> I will never I imagine or think something like that when I was yeah. 14, 15 <laughs> it just, it just, yeah, for me that was it's not a dream but it was like wow it's yeah. not an achievement uh, yeah she's the sure thing I mean this is really exciting yeah uh, that's From great not speaking English at all in the south uh -huh. being yeah. in the movie I mean that was that was great I was that, very very excited and she's yeah. so sweet and so yeah. professional I mean you can see she know everything what's going on on set there's nothing that you know that does, she doesn't see or doesn't understand so she's ahead of a lot of things, you know. She knows that's not going to work out. She knows that maybe here, she put more like here. She knows where she has to move regarding to the camera. I mean, she knows so many things. It's very sweet to work with. I mean, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was pleased. That was, that was a good experience. Good. That's I love her. I was obsessed with her when I was a kid. I wanted to just be her best friend. I actually wanted to be her. I just thought she was the coolest thing ever. So <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah. I should have been the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we're very excited so we like to end our interviews what we call some silly questions some okay. fun questions right. you ready all right so what is your favorite holiday drink uh it's a hot chocolate oh very good do you like it with marshmallows i never tried that i think this is your thing oh, yeah. <laughs> don't put marshmallow in hot chocolate what are you talking about <laughs> 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 you're in america you need to you need to do uh, as we do <laughs> Lisa, i found i found i mean things amazing i found chips you know chips uh, -huh. mm -hmm. uh wrapped in chocolate <gasps> yeah here in america i was yeah. like are you what <laughs> <laughs> we'll put anything in chocolate fry yeah. it put it in chocolate especially in the south yeah we'll, we'll oh, wow. make some people do, yeah. do chocolate covered <laughs> bacon i didn't see that oh listen i tried the a bacon donuts thing it's not too bad it's pretty good actually <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I actually yeah. like them. Okay, so okay, it's my turn. So your favorite holiday treat, and it can be a cookie or a snack, whatever you like for the holidays. Uh, I like the saucisson. <gasps> what is you that? Know? Saucisson. It's a French sausage, salty sausage, mm. dry, oh, savory. It, yeah, it's, it's very good, and <laughs> and oh no, it's good. And it took me a long time to find something similar here, except if you find this kind of French shop. 
the um, yeah, I found one that is quite close, but I love charcuterie. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Christmas, yeah. exact. Christmas, the good thing <laughs> is all over the table. <laughs> do, you, do you have a sweet you like, or are you uh, uh, not really that into sweets? Yeah, I'm more salty. Uh-huh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, what is your favorite Christmas song or carol? Um song would be the song in uh the christmas film which is die hard yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. kind of christmas movie <laughs> right <laughs> think about jingle bells la 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 that kind of song that's a cool one yeah yes that's a good one ho 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 yeah <laughs> okay yeah. So this might be tricky, but you can say your own if you want to. Right. Um, favorite Christmas movie? Oh, I <laughs> it can be Die Hard if you want. Yeah, you can do Die Hard. <laughs> I just said that one. I love Die Hard, and I love um, uh, Bridget Bridget Jones. Oh yeah, yes. that's a good one. That was a very cool one. And I'm, yes. and I'm a good. I'm a guy, and I liked it. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Well, very well done. I really like it. Yeah, very good. Okay, what yeah. is your favorite holiday tradition? Like decorating the tree or giving pre getting presents or just something you do every that you like really like to do with the holidays yeah so lately i've been doing santa claus <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's cute <laughs> so, yeah so each year i try to be a different santa claus right uh you can, can help it i have to bring some funny things in the middle so one day I had a i was the santa claus that got the flu so, oh no <laughs> <laughs> my nephew the kids right so they're small they're, they're young so they're you know in their bedrooms the door is closed and i'm doing all the scenery going in the living room and talking <laughs> oh the kids oh, oh. and i'm doing this coffee <laughs> <laughs> the other year i think i was doing a very 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 old santa claus that was falling on the ground and trying to walk and so the kids same thing they're in the bedroom and they hear me just like dropping things on the ground and, and her mother, which is my sister, playing with me like, oh, are you okay, Santa Claus? Let me get up oh. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, my age, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so every year I'm doing Santa Claus with a twist. <laughs> I love that. That That's is awesome. really cute. Uh, you're, you're working on your craft and your acting. Yeah. Your <laughs> it's Claus. not a single dual moment. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so what is your most memorable Christmas gift? And it could be from when you're a kid or as an adult. Just okay, so I was very active as a kid. You know, I was jumping mm -hmm. around and running everywhere. And so I was driving my mother crazy. And, uh, <laughs> and my sister was, you know, copying with me, but she's a little bit older. So in some form, it was like, okay, Carl, that's enough. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> During Christmas, they were allowing me to be me. <laughs> so I was able to stay late and I was able to just like, you know, play with my sister more than she would have accepted. <laughs> I love her a little bit more than she would have accepted. <laughs> and my mother wasn't telling me to stop. So that was, I think, my best Christmas uh, moment. Oh, that's and really cute. That's one. And I think overall, my best souvenir in Christmas is like, I don't have any bad memories. So that means all my Christmas was pretty cool. Oh, I like a little that. bit. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which do you prefer, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge or the Grinch? Uh, the Grinch is like the, the cartoon. The yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like, I like him. And I think this is uh, Jim Carrey, right? Doing the book. Yeah. He does the live action one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I like, I like this character a lot. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So this is a big deal here. So I'm going to ask, um, Why not mess up? <laughs> Christmas lights. Are you an all clear lights kind of guy, or do you like the multicolored lights? This mm. is a big debate, Carl. Mm. So we need to know what side okay, you fall I, I, on. I, 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 I love to buy <laughs> your audience. Uh, try to answer. I mean, this is a period that we have to compromise. I know, but, <laughs> uh, Let's say I love maybe the pure white. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very classic. Very, very, very sleek. Very yes. And the mm -hmm. kids okay. the multicolors. I would have to 
compromise with my nephew if I do that to my sister. But it's again. <laughs> <laughs> would you Would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Oh, a snowball fight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Come on, bring it on. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay, and then when it comes to gift wrapping, do you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or do you just cover it in newspaper <laughs> and you're done? <laughs> oh, I think I, I, um, I don't want to do the, the, the wrapping at the very beginning, but then <laughs> when I start, because I have to start, right? I have to buy things and stuff. But then when I start, I get kind of nerdy. So kind of a geek, I'm like, okay, oh, I have to fit that corner very well. I have to fold it like that. And I can even like slide it inside. You don't see it. And then if mm-hmm. I put tape here, it's perfect. And then how can <laughs> I tight around the box as much as possible? Like it's clean. You know, there's no uh, crisp or whatever around. It's not, you know, wrinkles. It's just perfect. So I don't want to do it because when I get to it, I get to it good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, I'm the same way. I get obsessed, and I have to. I have coordinating papers and bows, and yeah, it's a whole production. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Last question. What is your ugliest Christmas sweater? Do you have a ugly Christmas sweater? I think I used to have one when I was young, uh, but that was my sister that needed it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Her revenge, and- huh? Yeah, I think that probably, you know what? Probably. <laughs> she knew what she was doing. Because if you don't wear it, she's crying. She's crying. My mom said, wear it. <laughs> so <laughs> I used to wear it. And then in some point, have a big, uh, like, teddy bear kind of peluche. You know, a big bear. Yeah. Like, uh, but that's actually uh, E.T. You know, Steven Spielberg, extra, extra territorial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I got big size E.T. alien things. And that was fitting for him. So when I wasn't able to wear it anymore because I was very young and small, uh, I put it on my peluche and still on my peluche. Oh, over probably 20, 25 years ago. Oh, that's really cute. I like that. That Yay. is really cute. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you are just nailing this test. You, you just did it. passed. <laughs> you win. Wine <laughs> colors. The French wine town. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> well that's great well we are really excited for the movie Uh, it was really fun to get to talk with you thank you so much yeah thank thank you thank you um so are you on so do you have social media you'd like to share yes please so my name is a little bit tricky it's carl e landler and you can find me on twitter instagram and facebook and i'm sharing a lot of the movie uh, lately uh promoting the movie so go get on the social media and you'll find the date when it's going out and all the little uh, other uh, live that can do with the network. So we'd love you to check this out. Thank you so much. Yeah, we'll have all that information in the description section. So Perfect. definitely everybody needs to follow you and thanks, this was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed oh, it. Time. And thank you so much for uh, the opportunity. I mean, I had so much fun. <laughs> <Yeah. cool>. Yay. <laughs> all right, well, Merry Christmas and we'll hopefully get a talk again soon. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Joyeux Noel, Joyeux Noel. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, we'd like to thank Carl for coming on the podcast. That was really fun. It was so fun to get a different perspective on making these movies. And so I really enjoyed talking with him. And uh, so uh, Lisa, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lisa Fay Co. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media and on iTunes and YouTube and Ron Tomatoes. So make sure to check that out and make sure you're following the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media on iTunes and YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. And if you're listening on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We sure appreciate that as well. We have our patron group, which means so much to us. And we try to make it worth your while with exclusives and uh, giveaways and other fun stuff so definitely check all that out in the description section we'll have the links and then we also have our merch store which they're having sales pretty much all of december so you can get all kinds of when calls art and hallmarkies and uh holiday designs uh from artist jessica miller We've got all kinds of cute stuff would make great gifts for uh the hallmarky in your life so definitely check that out uh, the link will be in the description on t public slash hallmarkies and so we'd love for you to take a look at that and so thanks so much lisa for coming on and thank you to carl and let us know your thoughts on any of the things that we talked about we would love to hear either on twitter or on 
the comment sections here on YouTube. So thanks again. And we will talk to you all later. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.